Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you so much for coming back for part two of this top four series that I'm doing about top five things for beginners, starting calligraphy, and just sharing you, sharing with you what I have learned and how I got started. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what tools to buy and what I started with, and I'm going to give you some websites that I purchase from and purchase from quite often. So with that said, let me know what are some tools that you have started your calligraphy with or that you use. And also now let's get into the video. And before that, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. All right, now let's get into the video. All right, so when I first started with calligraphy, I, after learning what it was, I had decided to purchase a calligraphy kit. This kit, do I recommend it? Honestly, no. I purchased this at Ross and the kit, I don't even remember how much it was, but the quality of this is not worth the money compared to the tools I'm going to show you and the books from the previous video that we did. And I'm going to get into this and I'm going to talk to you a bit about it. And then I'm going to show you the pens that I recommend. And these pens are not that expensive at all. And also I'm going to show you some more pens that were pretty trendy at the time but really not so much anymore. As I was saying about this, this calligraphy kit, purchased it at Ross. Ross is a discount retail store. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. This book just gives you some pretty basic stuff and talks to you a bit about calligraphy and what it is. I don't even, honestly, I don't even remember. I read this book many, many years ago. Well, copyright 2008. Obviously, if you follow my Instagram, I didn't start in 2008. And anyways, just talk about the main thing that just showed me what the basics of calligraphy are and at, a t at the time when I was doing it, I didn't really understand it fully like I do now. I mean, it's just like with anything. It just showed like the angles. This is similar to the calligrapher's Bible. But I'm just gonna be br really brief about this. I had the chancery style. This was the first hand that I remember learning with calligraphy. And I don't, not much of a fan of it at all anymore. Because once you learn, so much more what you learn you tend to enjoy that a bit more but that is that and you're going to see some of the tools that i started with this right here what the hell was that oh, okay i was like where did that come from so in this kit it came with this pen which i guess m is for medium then it had some ink cartridges and then it had some gouache which I'm pretty sure this quality is not worth it at all to even open up and this pen i really like it a lot if i was able to have cartridges for it i would use it again because I, to me the build quality is not too bad. It's just your typical pen. You can see from the yelling of how it is showing its age. And now let's get into my early calligraphy. And I remember starting it. You see the ink bleeding. And then just doing the drills. And then getting into the lettering, not lettering, uh, the freehand stuff and really not having an idea. 
And then just stuff like this, wanting to do flourishes when flourishing is not something that you should do after doing calligraphy for a couple of years. And just really all over the place. But that is that. And then I have some more stuff in it, like stuff that's never gonna use. That is that, this was just a cheap kit to help me get started. And now, let's get into the pen. So the very first calligraphy pen, before I even had an idea, I think before I even knew that this would be considered a fountain pen. Actually, it's really good. I like it a lot. I'm never going to get rid of it. This is just a Pilot fountain pen. I forgot the actual model. I purchased it from jetpens.com, which quite a bit of these are from, not that one. Found that at my day job the other day. That's actually just a light and a stylus. And quite a bit of these from jetpens.com and John Neil Book. John Neil Books, John Neil Bookseller. I'll put it on the screen and I recommend those two because I've always had great service and the people at John Neil Books are great people as well. And so that is that pen. First, I'm going to talk to you about the broad edge pens and then we're going to get into the, should be considered like cola pen and some of these pens are more advanced than the others so here you have what you're most likely more familiar with which are the pilot parallel pens the pilot parallel pens i started with the bra i got the six millimeter and then i got the 3.8 millimeter the way how it works. You see this one, it is missing a piece because I cracked it after pressing too hard and not really knowing that there's certain things that you should not do. And this was the second calligraphy pen I purchased after the pound pen. And these pens, they come in different widths also free flowing ink. I have a video showing how to refill Pilot Parallel pens for cheap so you don't have to keep purchasing the cartridges over and over. And then this one, I purchased it from johnnailbooks.com. The reason why, if, if you see, it has the piece ground out. So therefore, whenever you're writing, you, you get a more, you get, um, I forgot what it's called, like a scroll, which is two letters with space in the middle, just to make it easily, whoa, just to make it easy, easier to understand. So that's why I have the two pieces of tape on it as well. That's a six millimeter. And then this right here is the baby, the 3.8 millimeter. And if you want, I could do a video on showing how to clean Pilot Parallel pens. Matter of fact, that is a good idea. Let me know in the comments below. So also one thing I've learned from using the six millimeter, the six millimeter compared to the 3.8, the 3.8 will, you have to be a bit more precise using a smaller nib because if you have any mistakes or anything with your letters, it'll definitely show. And, you know, pretty much that's with any pen. What, what am I talking about? And after those, the Pilot Parallel pens, you have your automatic pens. Automatic pens, they come in, these are just a few of the sizes that I have. And the pricing for the Parallel pens compared to the automatic pens, I don't remember the pricing of those. I, Hopefully I remember to, I'll put it on the screen. The parallel pens are a bit more affordable than the automatic pens. The automatic pens, I believe are around maybe like 10 to 15, maybe a little bit more, depending on 
where you purchase them. I got these from John Neal Books, or John Neal Bookseller, whichever, however you want to say. These pens, these are for broad edge calligraphy. You see it has the flat edge. And using these compared to the Pilot Parallel pens, you have to be a bit more precise of the pressure that you apply because these are, you would dip them in and there's a little, I don't know, I guess you, it's not a reservoir. It's just something that happens of these two plates being together that they hold ink in there. And also that's another thing to remember whenever you're cleaning them as well. I haven't cleaned mine in a while. And that's that. So I'm gonna talk to you a bit about the different sizes. This is 3A, 4A. Obviously the 3A is a bit smaller. And then the 4A, it's obviously wider. So with these, whenever you press down, they spread apart. And then you have the, I think this would be like a music note pen. Mine, I had it for a while. This was the very first one that I purchased after going through my pilot parallel pen phase. And it's very, very, this pen is very, very fun. You just gotta make sure to have a big enough sheet of paper for it. And practice a lot because one thing that you're gonna do is make a lot of mistakes and you're gonna have a lot of ink ink uh, coming out at a faster rate compared to a pilot parallel pen. And then after broad edge, you have your, which would be ruling pen, col well, actually this would be like flat edge, or I would consider this a cola pen. That's what I call this, it's a cola pen, because you dip it in, and then ink would get um, in between here. And you could either write with the point this way, or you could do, use this whole edge. Uh, there's just so many things that you could do with this pen and be very expressive. Just, I recommend if you do get into cola pens, I have, one that I made before out of, I made this by hand using a soda can. I just recommend if you use, if you make a cola pen, the ink is gonna splatter and go all over the place. Just be careful. This is homemade cola pen and then this was purchased. This one is made by Luthis, Luthis pens. And so then after all of those, you have what you consider brush pens. And in brush pens, you have different types, ones that are fine, medium, then softer. This one, what it you could use it for script, and it is a good pen for practicing. And these are not too expensive. All of these I purchased on jetpens.com. That's where I tend to focus on my brush pens because they have really good pricing. And then if you spend $25, you don't have to pay shipping. So that is, these are art line. They have stick and the blocks. The cool thing about these, just gonna show you really quick, is that you could clip them together like Legos. So that is the fine version of the brush pen. This is the, well, there we go, the brush pen. And I think it's very, very vibrant. I like it a lot. It's a nice, rich black. And then you have, I like these, this brush pen a lot. I had a blue one. I think these are, oh, Swiss made. The quality and the build of these, I like it a lot. Also the nib is not too big. And believe, I don't, I'm not, 
very, very affordable. And then this is a Pilot Petite. They also have refills that you could purchase for these. This pen, I recommend it a lot. It's not too big, it's nice and tiny. You just pull it out and you could have a lot of fun with it. I recommend purchasing this one a lot, especially for beginners. It's not gonna be too big, whether you have big hands like me or if you or have smaller hands. It's good for practice and it's affordable. Get the refills, I highly recommend it. And then getting into, I have many of these, this pen, not many people use them. They are good for script. You can get some fine, soft, and the only thing whenever you do purchase them, you have to purchase the body and then the cartridge. And then right here, this is a Zig Clean Color brush pen. Just got it in black. It is a medium to soft nib. Just make sure to not get this one confused with this one. Cause these nibs are, they look exactly, almost exactly the same. This one is a more manageable nib. This one is like I just said, the medium brush pen. And then another version of the Zig clean color. This is a real brush pen and it has the, whoops, I'm not even in the frame. Hopefully these are. See, it has more of a soft nib. These brush pens require a hell of a lot more skill using these. And then this is a Pentel Sign Artist Pen. As you see, it's soft. It's gonna focus. Come on, baby, we could do it. There we go. This is a soft, thin, very, very thin nib. These require a lot more practice. Well, I mean, honestly, anything regarding a hobby, et cetera, requires practice. And to end it off, all of these brush pens are affordable. If you want to get into broad edge calligraphy, I recommend start off with the Pilot Parallel pens, easily available. And another thing that I do with purchasing calligraphy supplies, I try to not purchase them on Amazon, like to support like the small businesses and that are more geared towards just the calligraphy, com calligraphy community. And then easily available. I know here in the US, I'm not sure about the other countries. You have the Crayola washables. These markers are very cheap. Just the only thing I will have to say is to not get caught up in using these and then being so cheap. It's that you can use them as brush pens per se. They're a good budget option and I would recommend you good venture to this path, but just go there, hang out there for a little bit and then just stick with the calligraphy, brush pens and everything we discuss in this video. And just have these as a nice little cheap option, not too expensive. And they come in different size. Whoa, just drop that one. Good job, Justin. Good job. So they come in two different sizes. And let's see really quick. Oh, well actually no, it's smaller. Crayola washable. All right, that is it. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. Let me know what was your favorite pen. And I appreciate you and stay tuned for part three. See you in the next video. Peace.